tonight for the opportunity of sharing again from the Word of God. Yeah. Now turning in your Bible to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Place something in your Bible there and then <clears throat> turn back to Nehemiah chapter 8 and place something in your Bible there and then turn to Proverbs chapter 15 and place something in your Bible there. We will get through those three sections in just a little while. I am honored to be with you today. I am excited about having this privilege of being with Brian and Danielle and all of the saints here. Never get tired of doing good. Never get tired of doing right. And never give up and quit. Uh, never entertain those thoughts. Always think in terms of doing more, never less. God will bless you. Now let's start. The joy of the Lord was declared to be the strength of God's people. Look at Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Then he said to them, Go, eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portions to him who has nothing prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved. For the joy of the Lord yeah. is your strength. Amen. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord strength. is your strength. If you allow Satan to quench the joy, you become weak. Right. The best illustration I know in the wild, the lions are always trying to kill the buffalo. Mm -hmm. Amen. Buffaloes are stronger than lions. One lion can never kill one buffalo unless the lion maneuvers around and places his mouth over the mouth of the buffalo so that he cannot breathe. Mm -hmm. I've watched a lion just lie there with his mouth around the buffalo's mouth. Because the lion knows that if I can stop his breathing, yes, sir. I'll be able to weaken him in just a little while. That's right. But as long as the buffalo can breathe and stand on his feet, there's no way one lion can take him down. The joy of the Lord is the strength of the people of God. Your strength lies in your 
joy. So you cannot give up your strength. If you do, Satan will always win. Joy medicated the hearts of the people of God. Look at Psalms 15 and verse 13. Psalms 15 and verse 13. A joyful heart makes a cheerful face. But when the heart is sad, the spirit is broken. Look again at Proverbs 17 and verse 22. Proverbs 17 and verse 22. A joyful heart yeah. is good medicine. <laughs> but a broken spirit dries up the bones. No wonder then. The Holy Spirit encouraged the saints. In Philippians 4 and verse 4, to all ways rejoice. That's right. Every believer should always rejoice. Right. Rejoicing is your decision. Here is the mistake we make. I cannot rejoice unless my circumstances change. That's not true. No, sir. You cannot rejoice because you haven't decided Amen. to rejoice. That's right. Imagine a prisoner who has been incarcerated and has no idea when he might be released. He placed, he's placed in his jail cell. Someone else decides what he eats, when he eats, when he sleeps. He gets word today that he's going to be released tomorrow. What happens? He rejoices. He's still in jail. That's right. But he's rejoicing. He's still under the jurisdiction of the jailer. He has no freedom, but guess what? He's rejoicing. Why? Because of what he anticipates. That is hope. You can rejoice because of what you anticipate. In the words of the Psalms, one glad morning, when this life is I believe that. So you have anticipation. Yes, sir. Every believer should always rejoice. You say, but I cannot rejoice because my circumstances have not changed. The prisoner is still confined to his cell, but he rejoices. He rejoices because of what he knows. What he knows. Why should every believer rejoice? Right here in the text, three things. We rejoice because of the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 5, Philippians 4. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Yes, sir. The Lord is near. Do you sense the awareness of the Lord in your decisions of life? The Lord. He's not some distance. Sometimes I think we probably shouldn't sing that song, Come by here, Lord. He's already here. Mm -hmm. That communicates an idea he's somewhere else. He's not somewhere else. He's here. His presence is always here. So rejoice because the presence of the Lord. The Lord is near. People who in were hospitalized. They rejoice when you walk in the door. But if they could just understand your presence is there with them, they could rejoice all the time. See, we deprive ourselves of joy when we think the Lord's not here. We deprive ourselves when we 
believe that we have to see some indicators. Growing up on the farm, I learned so many spiritual lessons. We plowed the ground. We were so happy when we finished planting the seed. Right. And you look at that field, there's no cotton growing, there's nothing out there. But we were so happy mm -hmm. because we knew seeds in the ground. And see, people who did not know what we knew couldn't understand why we were rejoicing. Mm -hmm. We have finally got the seed. The Lord is near. The second reason why you ought to rejoice, not only because of the presence of the Lord, but because of the provisions of the Lord. Look at verse 6. The angels were nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Notice, he says with thanksgiving. So include it in your request. There is a prayer of thanks. Now fast forward down to verse number 19. Philippians 4, you're probably more familiar with that verse. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Why do I rejoice? Because of the presence of the Lord. Why do I rejoice? Because of the provisions of the Lord. He's made provisions. And then thirdly, I rejoice because of the peace of the Lord. Amen. Because of peace. Peace is the absences of the distresses that are caused by sin. You ought to just be so happy there is no disruption. See, that's why you got to maintain a congregation where there's no disruption. So if all types of disruption is taking place in Anderson, you have a place of refuge, you can come to the house of the Lord right. at least for a little while. Right. Right. There'll be no disruption. Mm -hmm. So I can rejoice because of the presence of the Lord, because of the provisions of the Lord, and because of peace. But now watch this. There is the peace of God within us. Look at verse 7. Philippians 4 and verse 7. And the peace of God uh -huh. will surpass all comprehension mm -hmm. and guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Yeah. What guards your heart? Not your Smith and Wesson. My Lord. Not the police force. Not your skillful strategies and the fact that you got a black belt. It's the peace of God that keeps your mind at ease. Notice there is the peace of God within us. But now, if you think that's good, it gets better. There is the peace of God within us. But then there is the God of peace around us. Look at verse 9. Philippians 4 and verse 9. Things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Yes, See, it's one thing to have the peace of God, but when you've got the God of peace, listen, it's one thing to have the money of the bank, but now you have the bank of the money. Amen. Wow.
pointing out that in us. However bad it is or was, without God, it could have been worse. Amen. And without God, it would have been worse. Peace of God, of God of peace, you must Just decide, I don't care what happens. I am going to rejoice. I remember my first hospital visit as a preacher. Went to see Brother Lockett. He was scheduled to have surgery on Monday. I went to visit him on Sunday night. I had never in my life visited anybody in the hospital. So I had no idea what to expect. But I just assumed that he'll be in the bed moaning and groaning and all of that. Walked into his room, Brother Lockett sat up on the side of the bed. I thought I went to cheer him up. He cheered us up. He said, I'm ready for surgery tomorrow. Brother Lockett was probably early 80s, might have been late 80s. He said, if it's successful, there's no problem. I'm ready to meet my man. Now, wow, I left there encouraged. I thought I went to encourage him. But I learned later, Brother Lockett had decided that whatever happens, I'm going to rejoice. Heads I win, tails in other words, if I come through this successful, I'm going to rejoice because I get a chance to see my grandchildren longer, etc. But if I don't come through this, I get a chance to see the Lord face to face. Amen. Woo! Here's you That's right. We gotta start believing that. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So we can rejoice. See, everything that happens to us is not necessarily as bad as we describe it to be. Amen. I lost a job. Well, you might have needed a week of rest. Amen. You might have needed that. That's right. And here you are agonizing over it. And you know your agony don't make any difference. No stuff, right? If it, no one has ever called you up and said, you're not know, hurting you agonizing over your unemployment, so I'm going to give you a job. It never happens. It never happens. It's a decision. It's a decision. The presence of the Lord, the visit of the Lord, the peace of the Lord. If you don't have that, it is because of one of two reasons. The story is told that two robbers have a conversation. They wondered why are human beings running around worried so? One robber said to the other, they must not have a heavenly father like we do who takes care of us. We don't have a heavenly father. Trust him. Trust your heavenly father. Trust him. So if you don't have that heavenly father, then what, it's what you need to do tonight. You need to repent of your sin. Right. And be baptized. Born again into the family of God. He is your heavenly father. Yes. Listen. What father would feed his chickens and then starve his children? <coughs> the Bible says that God takes care of birds. You're more important than they. That's right. Trust him. So if you don't have a heavenly father, then in just a moment, we're going to stand and sing the song of encouragement. You need to just surrender all. Be baptized tonight. Yes, let me even be baptized tonight. And God will, you will be born again into his family. You'll have a heavenly father. Amen. Because he's your heavenly father and you can anticipate. And if you have been born again but you're acting like you don't have a heavenly father, quit. Stop it. You know how embarrassed you would be if your children went to school and you gave them much money and they told the teacher they couldn't eat? Teachers 
call you up and said, you know your child has not been eating all week long? Why? He said, they had no money. Wouldn't you be embarrassed? You enable your child to eat and they went to school and said, I couldn't eat. How do you think God feels? You said, I can't and he enabled us to do it. And then the heathen says, see what kind of God have you got? Don't embarrass God. Amen. Rejoice. You need to respond to the master. Get up and come right now as the other is coming. As the cross, as the cross, where I first saw.